many of you have a question about schema evolution support in Snowflake. When we extract and consume data from external systems, they tend to evolve over time. If you look into this simple employee example, on a day one, we have designed our table considering five fields in our employee data. But on a day two, there is a possibility that employee data may evolve and add one additional column called phone number. System that generates data add new columns to accommodate additional information for the business entities, which require downstream table to evolve accordingly. If we have to handle this thing manually, it's a quite time consuming effort and also it leads to our data pipeline failure. The structure of table in Snowflake can evolve automatically to support the structure of the new data received from the data sources. And that's what we are going to explore and understand in this video. In this quick and short demo, we will try the schema evolution table property for CSV data file as well as for JSON data file. The CSV data file is more structured data and on the other hand, JSON data is a semi-structured data. In the first scenario, we will see how the schema evolution table property works for CSV data file and what all changes are needed when you define your table properties, file format properties, and copy command statement by using the simple employee data entity. In the second scenario, we will see how the same schema evolution table property works for JSON data file and what changes are needed in the copy command to make sure that schema evolution feature works as expected without any human or manual intervention. So let's start. Welcome back to my channel, Data Engineering Simplified. The hands-on exercise covered in this video can be tried in your free trial account. Create an enterprise edition instance on AWS so you can access all the feature enabled without any issue. If you have any technical questions, need architectural advice, what's guidance on starting or migrating legacy to Snowflake kind of a data project, do not hesitate to reach out to me on my Instagram account. Many talented Snowflake developers are learning and growing quickly. If you would like to join this exciting journey, be part of my exclusive Facebook group. I am curious to have you on board. You can scan the QR code or find the link in the description section below to join this exclusive Facebook group. So I am in my SnowSite web UI and this is my first worksheet called create stage and file format. Let me quickly change my context. So my context got changed. First, I am creating a stage called my employee stage. So it is created. Now I am going to load two CSV file and two JSON file. Let's quickly review how this CSV file and JSON file looks like. So this is my first CSV file, which is called employee five columns. And this is my second CSV file, which is called employee six column. If you look into these files, there are roughly 10 rows and on the other file, we have six employee data set. And there is a key difference. If you look into the first file, which has employee ID, first name, last name, email, and designation. On the other side, we have employee ID, first name, last name, email, designation, and a phone number. On the day one, we get this file. On the day two, we get this file. And what we expect as a part of a schema evolution, this phone number is a new column which got added on a day two. And while running the copy command, Snowflake should consider this change. And that's what we are going to see first, whether this schema evolution flag works with CSV file or not. Likewise, I have two JSON file. One is called employee five column JSON. Another is called employee six column JSON. And, and if you look into the structure, it is start with employee ID, first name, last name, email address and designation. It also has close to 20 records. Each of these JSON entries are separated with new line. If I look into the employee six column JSON, it has one additional attribute called phone number apart from your first name, last name, email and designation. Now this is a semi-structured data and this data generally gets stored into a variant column and we are going to see the behavior how this schema evolution work when we are using JSON as a file format versus CSV as a file format. 
So when I refresh my screen, my underscore EMP underscore STG stage is available. Now let me enable the directory table. And I am clicking on the files and dragging CSV and JSON file. So what I'm assuming on the day one, the EMP underscore five underscore column dot CSV arrives. And let me load that. And on day two, I will get another CSV file which has total six column. Let me load that too. My day one CSV file and my day two CSV file got loaded. Now let me quickly load the JSON file. So this is my day one JSON file which has only five columns. So this got loaded. Now let me load the day two data. So my day two data got loaded. This looks good. Let's go back to our worksheet. Now let me check how this looks like. So I have CSV day one, CSV day two, JSON day one and JSON day two. Looks good. Before we proceed and create table, let me create two file format. One is called my CSV file format. Another is called my JSON file format. I assume you are familiar with the file format structure. So both this file format got created and if you are not familiar how this file format object works and how to load the data using file format, I would request you to go and watch my load playlist. So here I have created my stage. I loaded two CSV file and two JSON file. I checked whether all those data loading has happened properly or not in my stage location and I created two file format. One is CSV file format, another is that JSON file format. Next, I am trying to validate the schema evolution flag for my CSV file and then we'll try for the semi structured data type. This is my next worksheet where I'm going to create an employee table. And before I create an employee table, let me quickly change my context. So now I'm going to create a table called EMP underscore CSV under my learn dot public context. My employee table is created and now I am going to run an alter statement where I am setting this property enable schema evolution equals to true. So this is done. Now let's run the select statement. I do not have any data set. If you just run describe table emp underscore csv let's see what happens. So this gives all the columns so I have total five columns. And if I run show tables like emp underscore csv, if you look into this enable schema evolution property, this flag is set to true or yes. If you don't want to create a table using a DDL statement, you can also use using template keyword. And if I execute this statement, it will create my table by referring to this CSV file. Let's try to run that. My EMP underscore CSV is created. And if I try to run this statement, let's see what happens. If you look into the enable schema evolution column, this is false. However, if I describe the table, I have total C1, C2, C3, C4, C5, total five columns. Now, if I try to create a table using, using template, in that case, I need to make sure this skip header property has to be replaced with another property called parse header. Now let me re recreate this CSV file format. And I am going to recreate this EMP underscore CSV. It is created. And now let me describe this. Now I can see EMP ID, first name, last name, email and designation. So this looks good. And here again, if I run my show table, so my schema evolution flag is false. I need to set it true. So this I can do it by running this alter statement. The using template does not copy the data. For that, I have to run a copy command where I am inserting data into EMP underscore CSV. And this is the name of the file, which is my day one EMP five columns. And my file format is my CSV file format. Since I have removed the skip header equals to one, 
I have to copy this match case sensitive. So it will try to match the column and accordingly it will push the data into the respective column. So all the 10 records got populated, looks good. And if I run this statement, I can see starting from employee 101, total 10 employees got inserted. All the column data is correctly inserted. Now on the day two, when I get another employee data, which has a total six column, and if I enable the match by column name, it should insert the record. So to make it work for a CSV file, there are two changes required in our file format. So my parse header value should be true and my error on column count mismatch should be false. And on the other side, if you look into this copy command, so this copy command will have match by the column name equals to case insensitive and on error equals to continue. Let me recreate this file format. So my file format got recreated and now I am going to execute this copy command once again. And it says that total six record got loaded. Let me run my select star from EMP CSV file. This is how my result look like. If you look into the first 10 rows, my phone number is empty. And from employee ID 130 to 135, my phone number got added. As per the day two employee file, schema evolution property on my table has accommodated this newly added field which is coming through my CSV file. To accommodate new information in your CSV file to reflect in your table, you have to ensure that enable schema evolution property is true, as well as this two property parse header equals to true and error on column count mismatch should be false. Once these properties are enabled on your file format, table properties and copy command, any new information coming through your data set will be accommodated automatically in your table. Next part of the video, we are going to try schema evolution with JSON file, which is a semi-structured data type. So this is my new worksheet called with JSON. Let me quickly change the context. So my context got changed. I am going to create a table called EMP underscore JSON. And this time I am taking the day one EMP data, which has only five column. Now let me execute this SQL statement. So my EMP underscore JSON is created. Let's run a select statement. If you look into this table structure, here it start with designation, email, EMP ID, first name and last name. And this is one of the challenge. We have it with using template keyword when you try to do the infer schema with JSON file. Now moving forward, if I describe my EMP underscore JSON table, so it is showing all the column and their data type. Let's see if my schema evolution flag is true or not. It is no. So I will run the alter statement. Now my schema evolution flag is true. Now I'm going to execute this copy command, which is considering my five column JSON file. My file format is my JSON file format and match by column name is a case insensitive. And let me run this statement. So it says 21 row parsed and 21 row loaded, looks good. So if I run my select star from EMP JSON, I can see my designation, email, employee ID, first name, last name, everything is populated, looks good. Since my schema evolution flag is set to true, and this is a semi-structured data, when I'm going to run the same copy command for my day two file, where my file name is employee six and file format is my JSON file format, match by column name equals to case insensitive and on error is about statement and purge equals to true. I'm not going deep on those parameters. If you do not know how this parameter work, I would request you to go and watch my this playlist. So let me execute and uh, the expected behavior day two employee data set should get inserted even though it has total six column. This phone number should get inserted without any issue. So let me run this statement. 
Here it ended with an error saying that JSON file format cannot produce one or only one column of type variant object or array load data into separate column using match by column name copy option or with copy transformation. So match by column name is already available. So there are minor changes what I have done instead of giving this file format as a file format what I have done I have specified the file format as an inline however when I run this statement which is doing exactly the same thing what this first statement is doing let's see what happens okay so it needs a proper context So the total six record got loaded and if I go back and run this select statement, let's see what happens. So if you look into employee one to employee 21, I do not have a phone number. However, with schema evolution flag equals to true and match by column case, case sensitive, the data got loaded without any issue. So I hope you have enjoyed this short and quick demo. We have covered how schema evolution table property work for CSV data file and what changes are needed to support them. And on the other hand, we have also covered the semi structure data, which is JSON data file to support the schema evolution where your table structure gets changed automatically as per the new information available in your JSON file. The Snowflake tables hold many key insights to become a Snowflake Cloud Data Warehouse Pro Make sure to catch all the videos in this playlist. Thanks for tuning in to this quick tutorial. If you have found it valuable, hit the like button. By doing so, YouTube will serve up more Snowflake content from my channel to help you on your Snowflake learning journey. Happy learning and keep on growing.